Well, good morning and, and well, good day or good evening, wherever you are on the planet. And this is John Dupuy, CEO of iWake Technologies. And we have, um, well, we have a, a very special event going on, which is the, the advent, the promotion and the production and the release of, a, of something we've been working on a long time, Sound Asleep. And here's creator, Joe Kao. Hi, Joe. Hi, John. Good morning to you there. Yeah. So uh, I'm, this, is, this is just really important, okay? Because, I mean, there are a lot of things that afflict uh, humankind. But one of the things that is associated with almost so many types of suffering, whether anxiety, depression, just not being your best, uh, not enjoying your life, is the incapacity to sleep well. And, you know, we've struggled with this in so many ways. And over here, you know, you go to the doctor and he, he just prescribes something like Ambien. And that's probably the most prescribed drug. Or if you go to sleep aids, as Pam Googled, it's all about drugs. You know, it's like, hello. And, and these things, they're awful. I don't know if you've ever done Ambien. I think I took it one time some years ago. And I woke up in the morning just feeling hungover and, and polluted. You know, it's just awful. And you do this stuff and they're addictive. They're addictive. So, um, you know, and when you, we first started talking about this product or, or sound, sound Asleep, I was, I was, I don't know. I said, yeah, right. You know, I, I don't know. I, I was just kind of uh, incredulous, if you will, because I've tried different tracks and everything. It seems to work for some people. It never worked for me. But let me tell you, I love this track. And I can use it during the day, even when I don't like want to go to sleep at night. And I think we need to let people know that because your induction, your voice is amazing. And it, I just get into these deep, it's the most relaxing track, even if I don't go into like Delta sleep that I've ever used. And uh, I was running around this morning, getting ready for this interview and running my dog and doing laundry and doing all these different things, multitasking. I was like, Oh my God, I'm just like not ready for this interview. And I went and laid down and did your track again. And immediately I just went down, 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 down. So explain it to us. What did you do? And I'll keep, Stop raving about it, but uh, I'll continue <laughs> after I give you a chance to talk. Go ahead. Well, that, that, that's wonderful to hear, John. Um, no, I, I really appreciate hearing that. I, so my, um, my work as a hypnotherapist over the last 13 years, um, yeah, it's about, it's about 13 years I've, I've been seeing clients one-to-one, -one, um, has led me to be highly, highly interested in the ways that it's possible to help people to sleep more deeply. Because like you just said, so many psychological conditions are triggered by or worsened by or totally revolve around uh, sleep issues. Uh, people with um, lowered mood, with um, anxiety, so many of them all, all report sleep issues go hand in hand with that. And when you find a way to help someone to sleep more deeply, everything else in their life gets better. It's, it's uh, not the, I'm not saying it's a miraculous cure-all. We still need to, uh, we were just talking before this, this call about the political issues going on in both uh, the UK and in the USA. I'm, I'm not just saying a good night's sleep will solve everything in the world, but everything becomes clearer, simpler, more easy to manage when you've had a good night's sleep. So um, a lot of people have come to see me over the years for sleep issues, and I've, I've evolved the way that I work with them uh, using hypnotherapy over that time. And um, I've come up with and stumbled upon and uh, discovered principles that solidly work to help people to drift off to sleep more deeply at night. We, we could talk a lot about sleep hygiene, um, which I'm, I'm not going to do because it doesn't relate so specifically to this product. But sleep hygiene is the, the not very attractive uh, technical name because uh, I don't know if anyone wants hygienic sleep. But good sleep principles include, you know, you, you don't have a double espresso and sprint around the block 10 minutes before bedtime and, and, and or, simple or, things. In our case over here, you don't uh, read the news. Before. Exactly. <laughs> do not watch the news straight before bed if, if you intend to have pleasant dreams. Um, so th th there's a whole bunch of practical stuff that I, I always take clients through. You know, um, having a big meal before bedtime isn't such a good thing. And actually, you, you mentioned the news. 
uh, screens, uh, bright screens. We're all carrying around our gadgets and looking at um, these, you know, which have got the, the quite a blue tint to the light. And that's not so good. Apps and filters that you can get to dim down the blue light can on your screen. Can you just dim your screen? Would that be better? I mean, it's quite easy to do in, in, uh, with an iPhone. That's, that's one choice. That's yeah. one choice. And definitely uh, have it dimmer than, well, as dim as possible. But I believe iPhones and Android and certainly computers, that they all have uh, filters that you can, they're becoming more and more popular um, that just give it a slightly more yellower tinge that subtly uh, emerges according to your time zone at the right time of day. Uh, just to, to prevent that blue light uh, waking up effect that, that the screens have. But, you know, we, we could talk for a yeah. good half hour, 45 minutes about all of these tips and, and principles. That they all help, but they're not always enough for people. And I've, found, um, I, I've worked with people one-to-one -one and, and helped people one-to-one -one who've already been through all of these principles, who've been to sleep clinics, who've been given all of this advice, and still... They're lying in bed late at night, mind racing, looking at the clock, wondering why they're not asleep, and uh, and feeling pretty crappy uh, both through the night. You know, it, it can be. It can be hell. That's what it can be. It can be hell. Yeah. Uh, if if it starts to get really long term, absolutely. Yeah, it can let, let me let me let me share an anecdote. When I was in college back, I guess in my you know mid twenties or something like that, I went through this phase. I had like four days where I couldn't sleep. And I literally started getting psychotic. I mean, I started hallucinating. There were no drugs. I wasn't taking drugs or anything. But it's like when you don't get sleep, somehow your unconscious begins to merge in this oh, yeah. state. And it's not like good. And I, I went to the clinic and they gave me a pill. And, and it, I got back to sleep after that. I was okay. But I experienced that almost four days. And I was just like, I was terrified to walk down the street. I was so messed up. It was really awful. Well, th that's why I mentioned that um, so many psychological conditions relate to sleep issues because psychosis itself, the most convincing model of what psychosis is, is it's when people build up enough of a dream debt through not sleeping that they start to have waking dreams that because the, that's right. we, we have this need to dream. And yeah. if your sleep is so disrupted that you're not dreaming, they start to blend with the waking state. So, yeah, when people sort out their sleep, everything tends to calm down. Everything tends to become simpler, clearer, and easier. Yeah, and there's so much to be uh, talked about in this subject. And I have all these questions for you, but I, I want to, I know this is a, supposed to be a brief introduction, but can we come <laughs> back later and do part two and part three to carry this conversation? Like, why do we sleep? What goes on? These are fascinating questions. So but yeah. let's start with, with what you're doing in the induction. Uh, exactly. Your voice, and then we'll go on to what you did with the entrainment and how you put this together. Sure. sure. So the principles that I've found work best uh, to help people with that mind racing, being wide awake at night, each of which I incorporated into the Sound Asleep program, are number one, to slow down the internal processing. That's, that's a different instruction than stop thinking. Because stop thinking, you end up in that weird thought, attempting to repress your thoughts thing, Thinking uh, about no, not thinking, and then it just spins exactly, out. Exactly, yeah. exactly. There was um, an old comic book from when I was a boy, and the teacher tells one of the kids as a punishment, go into that corner and don't think about orange penguins. And you see the thought bubbles are just endless orange penguins. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm not, I, I would never say to someone, go to sleep and, and you know, go and lie down and stop thinking about anything. That's uh, pretty much a paradoxical instruction because you're using your thinking brain to try and not think. And that, that, that doesn't lead anywhere useful, but you can slow down. You can slow down the internal voice. You can practice softening and slowing down the way that you're thinking so that even if you are thinking that you start to introduce a yawn into your internal voice, you start to soften the mental images. So you give yourself free reign to say, oh, I'm going to think about whatever I like to begin with this, uh, <laughs> Alistair Crowley, is, anything is permitted. But anyway, you, you can lie down, lie back. And there's, there's nothing I'm trying to control here. I might smooth out my breathing a bit. But just whatever I think about is fine. I'm just going to slow down. I'm just going to slow. And then gradually, having started to slow down, you, you introduce some elements of progressive relaxation. So you say, but, but you link it to... But deep, 
the relaxation, my friend. Oh, uh, well, right. yeah, 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 yeah. But the, 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 the point is you start to link the relaxation to anything that's going on in your environment. So it's not a case of trying to shut out the thoughts and it's, I'm going to relax with these thoughts. If there's any thought about being still awake, oh, I'm, I'm going to relax with that too. It becomes very Aikido-like. You, you, you're using anything within your experience as just another thing that you can choose to relax with, that you can choose to take you deeper. I've found that works wonders. And um, the recording, so sound asleep, the vocally guided um, elements of, of, of sound asleep are all about using these principles of just linking anything in your experience to relaxation, slowing down the internal processing and of guiding people initially into um, the dream state, into having uh, hypnagogic imagery and just uh, letting their mind wander from image to image in, in, in their mind and then all the way down into deep slow wave sleep. And, and you mentioned using it during the day. What, what I all, One of the reasons why I designed Sound Asleep primarily to be listened to at night. It's not that you have to, but primarily to be listened to at night is because that's how uh, most of my hypnotherapy clients ended up using the recordings that I, that I made for them. I, I, I'd always record the, the one-to-one -one hypnotherapy I did with them in the sessions. And I'd say, hey, you can listen to this as a 25 minute recording uh, late afternoon. That will help you sleep more deeply at night. But I, I'd say about 90% of them always came back and said, oh, Joe, it was, it was great. I, 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 I just put it on at 10.30. And I was, I was away with the fairies by, by 11 o'clock. And, and I, I started changing the way I, I did the recordings, where instead of reorientating them at the end and saying, and now you, know, you can return to the here and now as I count to five, instead I just let the whole thing tail off. And then I, I'd shut off my dictaphone. And that would be, it would be a sleep induction. That's, that's what I'd, I'd uh, email over to them after the session. And uh, that became a more and more of a refined process over the years until uh, I, I was getting consistently fantastic feedback from people about how well these kinds of principles were, were working to, to take them into deep, deep sleep. Brilliant. Yeah, and I, I, I don't recommend it that you uh, do it while you're driving. No, okay? no, no. And spe especially in, in Britain, because you're all driving on the wrong side, and it's very confusing, and so it, would, <laughs> it would, could be a disaster. <laughs> anyway, so... so and, and and it's amazing the quality of your voice. I mean, I've done I've done voiceovers or guided meditations with entrainment, but your voice just carries the the I don't know this just inductive. Oh, I guess you're just a hypnotherapist. But I've had worked with hypnotherapists that didn't have your quality of voice and then the capacity to bring it down into that state, which is uh, it's, it's truly it's 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 an amazing. Uh, the quality of the voice and the presence of the voice and what you do with your voice besides just the images. It's really, it's quite a performance. It's really brilliant. Thank you. What, um, what led to that and what led to the voice being that way, it was an interesting process in, in itself because um, all, hmm, how can I put it? All the voice naturally changes depending what context you're in. And even now, as we're speaking over video conference, there's a subtly different quality to the voice than if we were speaking in a cafe, if we were speaking whilst going for a, a walk. Some, see, the voice changes depending on, on the context. I, I notice myself when I'm speaking over video conference, there's a little bit of a sense of I'm, I'm, I'm calling to you over the Atlantic. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm projecting my voice. And, and, and I, those are little unconscious cues that I think are... Um, an inherent part of, uh, of any kind of sound, sound recording. So there's the, the, the prototype version of, of Sound Asleep, I did my absolute best uh, to, we, it was all written out, everything that I would normally say uh, to a client and, and refined and streamlined and how can we communicate these principles in the most crystallized, distilled, poetic, in, impactful way where it's, it's just all there uh, with, within one script and, and I put myself into a relaxed state and began delivering those words into the microphone and, and that, that, that's the prototype version of, of Sound Asleep and we're, we're giving that one away as a bonus track because oh, so many people track. said, it yeah, I yeah. Love it. Really so good. many people said this, this, you know, this, this really, really helps uh, my sleep. I, I listened back to it a few months after originally creating it. And, and I thought to myself, yeah, this, this, is a, this is a lovely, soothing, guided meditation 
uh, themed around deeper sleep and at the volume tails off at the end and it becomes very, very easy for you, to, for you to drift off to sleep as you're listening to it. And at the same time, I thought, there's something more that we can do than this. And, and you mentioned the tone of the voice. There's, um, there's a very famous hypnotherapist uh, from the 20th century, very master of, um, well, master innovator who's really changed the direction of, of, uh, of, of hypnotherapy over the last century called Milton Erickson. And the funny thing about Milton Erickson is if you ever watch videos of him, particularly late in his life, it's, it's, it's mesmerizing, but you can't always catch every word either. And that's partly, um, he was an old man uh, at, the, at the end of his life. He, he'd got post-polio syndrome. He'd be telling stories within stories. Drift as you were listening, you'd be trying to catch the words. And, and it's not just about the, the words, it's about the intonation of his voice. There'd be a rise and a fall in his voice, which it becomes very easy for you to breathe in rhythm with. And he, he emanates or emanated just this beautifully, beautifully, beautifully soothing, um, mesmerizing uh, tonality that, 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 that itself is uh, an entrainment um, yeah. delivery system. <laughs> Sounds very mechanical, but he is, he is, he's resonating something deep. And I, and I listened back to the prototype of Sound Asleep and I thought, this is, this is a lovely guided meditation which will deeply, deeply relax you and prepare you for sleep. And I wonder if we can one-up it even further. I wonder if we can do something where it becomes essentially impossible to stay awake to a recording, where the voice is so soft, where, there are, where it's impossible to have mind chatter is there. And just in the end, the conscious rational mind, it's like reality dissolves and comes apart at the level of the molecule and, and you just drift into a, a deep, deep, deep state. I, I thought, how, how, how is it possible that, that we could layer in uh, more and more of that kind of just drifting, dreamlike, half-caught, half-heard words uh, where the mind gives up, where essentially you just surrender and melt away in, in, into dreamland. So there was a whole second stage in the um, development of, of the Sound Asleep program where I really, really went deep. And instead of, there was no, there was no scripts, um, there were principles I was using, there was a plan, but there was, it was much more free form from the heart, uh, layering in different elements and just noticing what came up as I myself went into a hypnagogic state and allowed the words to flow and allowed them to, to weave together. And certainly from, from what we've heard of people um, listening to it, it, it's remarkably difficult to stay awake to that track. It really takes you so, so yeah. deep. It's, it's, the, it's also, uh, in some way, it's a static as you begin to re relax your body into those mm -hmm. deep things. You just, it's like you say, the warmth and the comfort, I think those are the words you use really begin to spread. I was going to ask you, what did you do? Uh, also, we'll, we can come back to this, but what did you do with the entrainment music itself? What's going on there? You see, there's a huge amount em embedded within it. I, um, I always like to, uh, to push the technology uh, to, to find out what, what more is possible so that rather than it just being a couple of pairs of binaural beats and, and a musical background, that there's, there's ways that the whole soundtrack is embedded with um, isochronic pulses and that the isochronic beats themselves. So isochronic, be I, I, I could, I could, I'm not gonna give a mini, a mini um, background lecture about the, uh, the exact nature of each of these elements of the technology, but let's just say that if, if binaural beats are computed by your brain when there's a slightly different sound in each ear and then your brain um, computes a third phantom beat that isn't really there in reality, but is there within your auditory processing systems. That your in brain, itself- Your brain becomes a mixer and takes a few tracks and, and, and brings it together in, in, a, in a different something. That's very Exactly, yeah. exactly. The, that, that seems to do a, a wonderful, wonderful job of, uh, of entraining the rest of the brain, but you can incorporate so much more than that into uh, an entire entrainment track. So the, the, there are also pulses within there's some filtered pink noise in the background, there's stuff at the upper end of human hearing, there's stuff right in the subsonic range, and there's actually stuff in, in the middle of the track as well, in the middle of the frequency range. And those isochronic 
pulses are unlike uh, any other tracks that have been created because I, I studied very, very carefully the waveform of actual delta waves. And um, they're not smooth sine waves. There's, there's much more of a triangular, and it's a rounded triangle, but there's a, there's a triangular shape to the waveforms of delta wave. So I wanted to make the isochronic pulses in particular something that would be a mirror and uh, that would match up with the way that delta waves actually flow in, in slow wave sleep. So there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in, in the background of, of the tracks, as well as 3D processing and filtering out any harsh frequencies to make sure the whole thing's especially soothing for sleep and to make sure that the mind just becomes immersed and the, the, the sounds gently swirl. And it's, it's enough to maintain your focus on the sounds and to keep you immersed in the sounds without there being anything jarring or, or, or distracting in there. So I, I really wanted to create the, the optimal soundscape for something that people can just melt away into deep sleep whilst, whilst listening to. Yeah, and, and what I've, I've found um, is that the more that you use it, the more effective it gets. Mm. So if you use it the first time and you just get to a certain state, just keep using it, you know, a night after night for a week or two. And you're going to, I think it begins to program your unconscious, you know, and I'm saying this, it's, it's kind of a metaphor. What does that really mean? We're not sure. But, mm. but it starts, you begin being trained to sleep and it becomes a natural response. At first you're kind of figuring out and you're going to this deep thing and it's kind of new territory. But as you work with it more, you become more familiar with the process and that allows you to let go at an even deeper level. Um, you're just you're just practicing with it. Go into dreamland. We need to deal with the unconscious or the collective unconscious, whatever's going in there. We need to go into deep delta and just uh, awareness without uh, without content, right? That goes into deep, deep sleep and not the, not the REM sleep, but we need all that stuff. And if we don't do that, we, we get ill and we don't do that well. So this is really programming us. And, and what I found with, in general, with this technology, if people use it, dreams start uh, becoming much more powerful. You know, if you're just, you know, using PMP 3.0 every morning or something like that. When you do fall asleep, you'll find out, whoa, there's so much going on. It's very powerful. But I would imagine this would be even more powerful in that direction. And you can really look forward to, to sleep. Oh, and, and the first time I used it, I went to this deep sleep state with awareness. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, everything was going, but just the observer self was kicked in at the same time. And it was an extraordinary state. So, uh, yeah, so keep using it, practice with it. And, uh, you know, it's so new. We haven't had an uh, opportunity to do it over a long term. But I, I imagine the results would just get, you know, just get deeper and deeper as you go. And the whole sleep thing, instead of, instead of becoming something to fear, something to struggle with, becomes something you can't, you know, you look forward to because so, it's, so much work gets done, so much processing, and you're in this, this other realm. Of, yeah. um, that's not this, but something that we, we, we need essentially. And through our dreams is where we find our wisdom and guidance often, work through issues. And uh, it's, anyway, it's just extraordinary what you put together. The, the, the benefits of these, this kind of technology and, and also the, the verbal guidance that, that I, I layered into it, they, it, it can sneak up on you. Um, like I, I've seen people who've had trouble sleeping and I, I've worked with them one-to-one -one, and they've actually been in the session looking uh, I mean, frazzled from sleep deprivation, but like they were, they were having trouble really, really relaxing because they were so stressed about the fact that they weren't sleeping. And I, I was able to relax them 25% more, 30% more. Uh, but they, they, they were, you know, I, I'm thinking of one client in particular I saw recently, very, very stressed about the, the fact that she hadn't been sleeping. And this was the first meeting that I had with her, the first session that I had with her. And by the end, she looked more relaxed, but she wasn't convinced at that point that she was going to sleep more deeply. And it was two weeks later when I saw her, the, the effects had crept up on her. She, she'd had, and that's the interesting thing about when a change happens spontaneously and unconsciously. There isn't necessarily the single moment epiphany of, uh, oh yeah, great, now, now I'm sleeping more deeply. Sometimes it, it sneaks up on you, it, it creeps up on you. There's, there was some great research, this is a tiny tangent, but a brief tangent, I'll make it, but there was um, fascinating research by uh, 
Dr. Carol Genendez at Harvard Medical School on using hypnosis to increase wound, to accelerate wound healing and, and bone fractures. And you don't get more physiological and unconscious than that. This isn't stopping smoking or, um, you know, overcoming a spider phobia. Broken bones and, and gashes in the flesh. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's pretty, exactly. that, that's really, I think, the, the, one of the ultimate tests for how words and the mind can can influence the, the body or how, you know how the, how the body mind system functions as, as, as a unified whole and uh, and that she she got um, you know to, to be done with double blind studies where uh, radiographers were looking at x-rays of, of bones and people who'd received the hypnosis as part of their recovery process versus people who just received a pleasant chat because they, they wanted to make sure that it wasn't people receiving attention that was um, accelerating the healing, but it really was the, the hypnosis work. And lo and behold, bones heal faster when you repeatedly suggest to the body that uh, those bones strengthen and heal. Wounds heal faster. Uh, the, you, you can very much influence the body. Now, sleep is not something that you can just consciously switch on. Uh, or, you know, I mean, perhaps very, very advanced yogis uh, could do such a thing if you train for many, many, many years. But for, for most of us, sleep is something that's totally unconscious. So the, the question is, what can you do? You can you can do everything within your environment to prime yourself for deep sleep, including dim lights and all, all the things we talked about at, at the start of this this call. But you can also give yourself suggestions. And it, it, I mean, you mentioned earlier, what is the unconscious? What are we talking about here? Well, the unconscious is a, a loose general term, but it does point to something. It very much points to something. A lot of what we do and how we, even the very way that we walk, the way we understand language, the way our immune system works, is all related to unconscious aspects of the mind. And it turns out you really can communicate and effect positive changes through communicating with your unconscious. So when you repeatedly give yourself suggestions that it really is okay now to start sleeping more deeply at night to start sleeping really really deeply all all through the night then lo and behold it might not be that night that you sleep the deepest but you do that again the next day and again the next day and by the third night or the fourth night or the fifth night something starts happening and you really do uh wake up in the morning and go oh yeah actually <laughs> I don't know. I don't know when I had the epiphany that this is this has worked, but actually, and, and that that's been my experience of what's self hypnosis, and it's exactly what's weaved into the the Sound of Sleep program. That with with repeated use, you, you just need to be open and and curious over a period of days. You you start tracking how you've been sleeping, and you'll start to find you're you're instinctively feeling more relaxed when it comes to bedtime. That you're instinctively just nodding off. Uh, more easily and and sooner, and that actually you, you 're going deep going deeper and deeper into sleep uh, more and more easily and and more and more smoothly as as time goes on wow i 'm just thinking I have so many ways this could be used in the world in hospitals and helping people to to that get into these deep states where as you 're saying uh, healing happens more quickly. You know, whether it's psychological healing or physical healing. It's very good. Uh, we kind of need to wrap this up because we want this to be a brief introductory thing. But I want to talk to you more about this later. What you're uh, going to give us next? <laughs> I've, I've had thoughts. I've had uh, there's, there's, there's things. There's things emerging. Um, uh, the... The most likely next project that I'll be working on will relate to, I talked about epiphanies just before, but uh, intuition, insight, uh, going into a deep, deep theta state and uh, allowing ideas to come through, allowing insights to come through. I'm, I'm really interested in, in that and in what's, in what's possible. In, um, this again involves relinquishing conscious control and not thinking that your conscious rational mind That's knows right. everything right. and and really trusting that that you know more than you think you do and in fact I, i'm i'm open to where ideas and insights might might come from i i, I have no fixed opinion about exactly whether we can uh, you know tap into some kind of collective unconscious I'm, I'm i'm open to such things i'd like to i'm certainly something i've explored 
the way that um, randomness or seeming randomness can suddenly result in, and spark in a, in, in a totally brand new idea. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. I'd, 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 that's that's what I'd like to be exploring and what I plan to be exploring much and, more deeply. And to help us get into those states, because I know my my best moments when I'm teaching or talking or writing stuff come through, and I'm just like, I'm just amazed. It's like I said that. You know, yeah. that came through me because it, it just feels like we're t tapping into this deeper source, wisdom stream. Exactly. That's that, field. It's really amazing. So it's how can you be more of a, a conduit for that? Um, because it's, uh, I, know, I know we, we need to wrap up the interview now, but it's, that's, uh, that's the interesting thing. It's not just about sitting in a room, gazing at a blank wall and relaxing and allowing things to flow. The creative process there's times of hard work and engagement and challenge yeah. and conscious, you know, wrestling with ideas and feeding a new information. And then there's the surrender. And when you just relax and then, and then allow things to flow. And it's that oscillation. There's a real yin yang quality uh, to creativity. So that's, um, that's, that's what I'm planning on, uh, on exploring next. So well, well said. Well said. <laughs> hey, Joe, thank you so much. And I just want to say on behalf of, you know, all of us and I awake and I awake community, I am so deeply honored and proud to have you be a part of what we're doing. Um, it's just, it moves me deeply. So thank you very much. That's, it's, it's a pleasure and a, and a privilege to be, to be working with, uh, with you all. So yeah, th thank you, John.